So what I've done is I've, I've taken the various model sheets of different characters from various cartoons over the years. Like this one here is uh, uh, Spike the Dog from the Tex Avery series. There's Droopy right there. Um, there's Screwball Squirrel. Uh, let's see, this is um, uh, the Big Bulldog from the Warner Brothers cartoons. There's Goofy from Disney. There's Wiley Coyote there. There's Porky Pig. Uh, old Daffy Duck. Uh, there's Heckle and Jekyll, there's Sylvester, Yosemite Sam, uh, the old Egghead, there's Elmer Fudd. Okay. So I've just gone through and broken the characters down. There's Popeye, uh, that's uh, Donald Duck there, there's uh, Jiminy Cricket, one of the dwarfs from the uh, Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. Here's uh, Foghorn Leghorn, Tasmanian Devil, Tweety Bird. Okay, so they're all broken down into their basic body shape. So what I want you to do is, on my website, you can go in there. Uh, it's under the... I'm trying to remember which assignment it is. When I do the lecture, I will post the website down at the bottom here. And uh, you can see what the URL for it is. Um, I want you to go in there and you can look at all these drawings and, and pick out a character design. Okay, or if you want to for this assignment, you can create your own character design. But basically, keep the shape of the character something like this. That's the, the structure that I want. Don't want any facial expressions, no you know, design for the clothing or anything like that. Just really, really simple basic shapes is all we're going to deal with for this assignment. All right? So, the first thing you need to do is to try and figure out what type of body type you want to use for your character design. So just off the top of my head, um, I got to just sort of come up with something quick here. <laughs> um, and I had a, I think you guys saw the, I did a bear design a couple of weeks ago. I'm just trying to remember exactly what that bear looked like. reverse the legs on this so that they're thin thick so it matches up with what I'm doing with the arms going from a thin arm here to thicker hand so I'm just coming up with a basic shape here so I know that my what my volumes and proportions are going to be something simple like that. Okay. So that's the idea. He's not properly balanced there, but that's the general idea of what I think I'll do with my character. So my basic shapes here and you can see that as I was sort of formulating the character, I was coming up with the basic rough shapes. 
I'm going to have a standard teardrop body that's thicker down at the bottom here. So by teardrop it means that it looks like a tear that's up here. I'm holding the top of it and it's wider at the bottom. Generally speaking when you're designing characters, and this is not an absolute rule, but you'll see a lot of character designs have this basic rule to them that they are uh, thicker at the bottom and uh, thinner at the top. Uh, like different things like their appendages, their body, their head. So like when I draw the legs like this, it just adds a little bit more weight to the character by making them thicker down at the bottom there. Now when I draw the legs on here like this, I'm just sort of attaching this to my back line like that. And I'll bring this line here just to change the attitude of the structure of where the hips are going to be. Just makes them a little bit wider. And when I draw the feet, Again, I'm, I'm just sticking with my basic shapes here. I want to have these little toes on here just so I've got a sense of direction of where the, the toes are pointed in. Um, so my center line coming down here would come down like this. I've got a circumference going around here. So there's my primary ball that I'm going to be using for my up and down movement. My hips are going to be placed out here and over here on either side. That's my hip line right across there. <coughs> and then my shoulders are going to be very, very short, not very wide there. Again, just sticking with the idea that it's thinner at the top and thicker at the bottom towards the hand. Gives it more of a cuddly feel since the character is a teddy bear. I want to keep it simple. And again, I'm not going to draw fingers on here, and I don't want you guys to draw fingers as well. Just keep it like mitten hands, just to keep it simple. And then same idea with the head here. I've got this teardrop shape comes down like this, where it's thinner at the top and thicker at the bottom, again to add weight to the overall feel to it. So then blocking out the basic shape here with a center line, you come down like this. So I've got a concave line going in there. There's my eye line cutting across here. Sometimes I like to throw the nose on if your character has a distinctive nose, it can work as a as sort of a, a marker for rotation as opposed to using the line because when you use the eye line, the center line, it can tend to uh, slide on your character's head. So rather than actually <coughs> rotating the shape three-dimensionally, what you're actually doing is you're just taking that line and sliding it on the shape. So I like to put the nose on there just for the sake of having an anchor point that I can actually rotate three-dimensionally and it just helps in the movement of the character. And the ears uh, are optional. The ears, I'm not going to actually animate those initially. Uh, I'm going to leave those as an overlapping action component. And the same thing probably with the tufts of hair on the top of his head. So those two things I really don't need uh, for what I'm going to be doing. So there's my basic blocking out of what my character is going to look like. So this is the type of thing that I want you guys to work on as well. Is coming up who your character with who your character is, what their proportions are, uh, their structure, work that stuff out so that now when we go into the, the next stage of blocking out the main key poses, we know what it is that we're drawing. So I'm just going to set this off to the side over here so I can reference it. And I'm now going to begin with my first key position drawing. So you'll remember when we did our other assignments uh, with the arm swing and with the, uh, the leg cycle, uh, we established a horizon line within our environment. We did it sort of after the fact, but with this one we're going to go with the horizon line first and uh, we want to establish where our character is going to be within this horizon line. So for my horizon line I'm going to have it roughly around the character's eye level, right about there, so my character is going to sit right along this line right here. That'll be the placement for them. And this will just help us with our basic perspective. Now you can choose which direction you want your character to be walking in. They can be walking to the left or they can be walking to the right. really doesn't matter. If you want to keep it consistent with what we've done with our leg cycle and the arm cycle, we can have the character going in this direction here. So if that's the case, what I want to do is I want to sort of block out the basic position for the character's head. Well actually, let's, let's work it from the legs up. Okay, We'll do the leg cycle first and then we'll add on the upper body. Um, so let's start off, I mean, we can just very, very lightly draw in where the head is going to be here so we know proportionally where it is. And then what we're going to do is just draw the body here with our primary circle for our hip right down here. And then we're going to 
turn the character's body so that if we're drawing a, a cross contour showing the front line of the body, center line of the character's body, it's going to go like this. So we know that the character's facing in this direction over here. So now what we want to do is we want to establish where our hips are going to be. My hips are wide apart. And this is the, the drawing where we're going to have the wide leg stance, where the legs are furthest apart. So I'm going to draw my one leg in its forwardmost position over here, coming off of the hip here, with the heel down and the toes pointing up. So I'm going to show a little bit of the bottom of the foot here. I like to draw the instep with a little bit of a curve going in this direction. So you can see I'm looking at lines of action. Even at this, this simple stage here, I'm looking for lines of action running through the character. So I've got this line here is giving me the curvature of the spine back this way. This line here is sweeping the leg forward and then the curve going in this direction here. So they're all C curves going through the whole thing. I'm just going to draw my little toes on here again just to give me a sense of direction as far as the perspective plane goes. So now this is my contact point down here on the ground. So what I can do is just very lightly draw on here a perspective line going back to a vanishing point that's off the page over there. That's going to be my path of action for my foot traveling back in this direction here. So now what I want to do is I want to establish where is my vanishing point. And your vanishing point can go anywhere in this area here. I wouldn't put it too close to the character because then it makes the character look like they're in a pure straight on side view. So let's try to slide it out maybe about half the distance on your page to a point roughly about there. And this is going to help us to establish all of our perspective and our grid for where the character is going to be standing and where their foot, feet are going to be placed. So we know that from this contact point here we've got a line that's going back which is the path of action of the foot along the ground. And then over here, we want to connect the line through this vanishing point across here to give us our spread on the, the legs. So the width of the hips is going to be reflected in this spread here. So when I look at my model sheet, you can see I've got fairly wide hips, but I've got the feet sort of angled in so that the distance between the heels here is actually very short. So that's something that I want to consider when I'm putting this in here, is I don't want to make my track here too wide. If I put it way out here, then the character is going to have that waddle feel to them, where they'll be going side to side a little bit too much. I don't necessarily want that. So I'm going to place the line through here, more like that. Now, one of the other things I'm just going to modify slightly is the line that I have across here. I'm just going to modify that, and I would suggest that you do it as well. Just pull it down in this direction a little bit so that it's not quite so angled, because what that ends up doing is it creates more of a depth to the character and your leg in the backmost position will tend to shrink a little bit. Now when we're doing the walk cycle for the, the full body character, what ends up happening is when we put the other leg on the opposite side, it's going to sit roughly about here, sorry, roughly about here. So you'll see that the leg coming across here is going to cover over any leg that's in the backmost position. We might see a little bit of heel there, but it just sort of causes a little bit of a depth issue if we have the line angling up in this direction too much. So what I'm going to do is, that, like I said, I'm just going to pull that line down so it's not quite so angled. That would be my recommendation for you as well. Just pull it down so it's a little bit more close to where the horizon line is. And then you don't get the perspective issue. <coughs> so this will be the width of the feet on the ground. Even though my hips are wider apart, remember I'm pulling them in. So therefore, my back leg with the hip being roughly about here, is going to go back in this position and I'm going to put my foot down here. Like that. Now, again, I've mentioned this before that I like to draw very, very lightly at first. I mean, I'm drawing a little bit darker so that you guys can see it. but. In my actual animation when I'm doing something like this, I would probably draw really, really light so it's very faint and that way I don't have to do a lot of erasing. And I can always make little modifications to the lines if I want to. Like let's say I want to take this foot here and just turn it out just a little bit. I'm just going to pull my line over this way a little bit more. And then with these little toe lines here, I can then adjust that so that my toes are sitting over in this direction. So that rotates the foot towards me more. 
So it's again, it's just a little visual guide to say this is the direction that that foot is faced it, facing right now. Okay, so that's all I'm going to draw for the cycle so far because again, I'm just going to sort of block it out in different layers. We'll deal with the arms next after we get the, the legs going. So now what we need to do, this is be our drawing number one. Now what we need to do is we need to do drawing number nine, which is our opposing key. So this is just going to be our mirror image of this one. So I'll find my vanishing point right here. And because it's a mirror image, I have to figure out what I'm going to do with these hips. If, if I'm going to have the hips, like in, in the previous assignment that we did of just the leg cycle, remember we had the hip line going across here, we found out where the spinal column was, and essentially we just moved it straight up and down on this line here. So there should have been some up and down movement taking place, but we had nothing taking place side to side. Here's now where you can start to play around with that if you want to. So you could say that in this pose, when the character brings their foot forward, they're actually going to be leaning more away. So therefore, in the opposing pose, when the character puts this foot forward, they're going to be leaning towards us. So I can put a sway back and forth on the hips if I want to, which simply means that I've got to take that circle that's right here and shift it over to here a little bit. Okay, so my second ball is going to be shifted just slightly to the left like that. So there's a side-to-side -side movement here. So now when I go to draw my feet in, get that bottom plane there. Here's my instep for the right foot. Here's my little toes. So it looks like they're opposing feet. And then get the swivel taking place. So in this one here, this hip is forward, this hip is back. Now I want to bring this hip forward here and the other hip back. So remember how we had that pivot taking place where the hips were almost lined up straight to each other. What we could do here is just sort of offset them slightly. So we'll have one hip point here and the other hip point comes to here. So now on the opposite side we're going to take from the heel through to the vanishing point on that plane on the opposite side is right there. So that's where my heel is going to sit, <coughs> right there, connecting up into the hip on this side over here. So drawing through the character from the hip point, that's where my heel is going to be, on the opposite side. And I want to take that foot on the other side, because this one is facing towards us this way, I want the other one to be facing away. So I've got to make sure that I'm pushing it out like this. So again, it's going to be hidden in behind this leg here. We won't actually even see it. So there are the two opposing points. Now, I'm not going to draw on the upper body because again, I want to try and figure out what I'm just doing with my hips and then I'll figure out what I'm doing, going to do with the upper body. So now let's go to our breakdown. Between 1 and 9, we have number 5. So remember, timing chart. You can draw the timing chart on here if you want to. But it's going to be exactly the same as what we did for the legs on the last assignment. We're subdividing the whole thing equally. 2, 3, 4, 5 is our breakdown halfway. 6, 7, 8, and then into 9. So we know what our frontmost position is from drawing number 1. This position right here, which is this point right here. And then we know what our back position is going to be based on this drawing here, which is back there. There's our path of action that the feet are going to follow from here to here. So we subdivide that in half, and that's where the heel is going to be on our number 5 drawing, the halfway point. So now, again, we have to make our decision as to how this character is going to walk. Are we going to make this the high point, or are we going to make this the bent knee low point? So you remember in the last one I did a straight leg for the leg cycle, I did a straight leg for the halfway point. 
On this one, I'm going to make this the low point. Okay. So that means that my hips in this position, my one hips are over here, the other hips are over here. So in this drawing here, I'm going to lower the hip down and put it in the <coughs> middle. So my action is going to be down and out, down and out, this way. Very, very subtle movement because I don't have a lot of space to do anything in. But that's the heel position right there. And this is going to be my leg bent. So I've got to find my hips. Hip forward in this position here is right up here. My hip back on this position is over here in the middle of the ball. So I've got from here to here, I'm going to go to my halfway position right there. That's where my hip is. And so now because I'm bending the leg, I'm going to go from here, bend the leg, and down to the heel. Okay, so this is for the far leg, not the front leg, it's the far leg. Now I just draw the volume on here. And remember, I want to keep the instep here on the outside of that line and twist the foot away. That. So now we'll find where my hip is on this side here, which is over here, and then we're bringing it forward into this position right here, this here, so I find the halfway position and drop it down slightly. There's where my hip is going to be. And so because I'm pulling the leg forward into a dipping position, I'm going to bend my knee on this one quite a bit. Now I can modify this anywhere I want. If I want to, I can bring it forward more. The placement that I have it in right now is going to cause from this position here to this position here to be slower. And then my forward action from here to here is going to be fairly quick. So if I want to even it out a little bit more, what I would do is I would actually pull my hip forward a little bit more into this position. And put my foot down here a little bit. Okay, so that sort of evens out the placement, so it's not quite so fast or slow on one side or the other. So again, when you make decisions like this where you're going to have the character's hips drop and the knee bend on the one side, then you've got to compensate for how you're going to get that leg to swing forward without scraping through the ground. Right? You want it to clear the, the surface of the ground. If I drew the leg down here like this, down here, it would actually be digging into the ground based on where my line is through here, which is right across there. This would actually be going into the surface of the ground. And I'd have to dig a little trench there. Okay, So it's like you'd be walking through snow and digging a little trench each time you walked. So you've got to work out the parameters of what the physical limitations are based on the environmental So there's a nice little side-to-side -side action with the knees bent. Okay, so now what I want to do is I want to draw my opposing drawing. This is number five, my breakdown. I'm now going to draw my number 13 drawing, which is my mirror of this one. Okay, so I'm going to put the hips in the exact same position, because this one is in the middle and the low point. So rather than just drawing the mirror of this one, I'm going to go back to my number one and nine, and I'm just going to read in between based on whoops, the physical things that I know. So my heel is here, the back position. Heel's back here, and then it comes forward into this position here, which is right there. So there's my path of action there. Half the distance is right there. So that's where my heel is going to be on this side. And again, I've got to find my hip. Forward is in this position here. Back is in this position over here. Half the distance in between the two and down a little bit is right there. So therefore my knee to go into that position there. Yep. 
Can I see the number nine one? Sure. Number nine. Yeah, thirteen is the mirror image of this one here. So now I'm drawing this foot is this foot here on the opposite side. So now I have to draw my knee on this one here in its opposite position on this one. So this is where I would refer to this in order to get it in the proper place. Let me just reverse the drawings here so I can flip it properly. I just see a little bit of it like that. That's what it looks like is the in-between. pretty good action there. I could probably pull the hips down just a little bit lower here. <coughs> just so there's a bit more of a dip in it. What I originally put in there is pretty subtle. That's a little bit better. That's nicer. I like that. Okay, so I need to do the same thing for my number five drawing. Make sure that the hips are just as low in this one. Has to come down a little bit further here. That's good. Okay, so those are the basic mechanics now of my legs. So now what I need to do is I need to determine what am I going to do with my upper body and how is this, this attitude in here going to be reflected. So again, this would require some acting out to physically figure it out. I'm just sort of winging it here. So I'm just going to try and think if I go to that position there, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull his body forward like this. So I'll get a little bit of that action taking place. So that's the, the motion that I want to get in the body. I'll just draw my opposing position here. And don't forget, you have to offset it. So now there, Again, there are a number of different things that I could do here in that if I have the body going in this direction on this one, I could suggest that it's sort of swooping in that direction away, in which case the mirror image would have the body swooping in this direction on this side. So I could pull this line here a little bit more this way and pull this line this way. So I'm actually getting an opposite type of a feel to it. Okay, but then I've got to remember how am I going to get from one position to the other. So let's just take a look at these two here. And that'll be more on the in-betweens than anything else. So that should work pretty good. So now on number 13, I'm just going to do my opposing body as the mirror image, which will be a trace back of number 5. proceed up to the shoulders and the arms. Now when we did the shoulders and the arms in the last one, remember we just did the shoulders and then we did the in-betweens and then we figured out what we were going to do with the arms. I'm going to sort of jump a little bit over that and presume that, well, I know what the arm positions are going to be because I'm going to think two drawings back on this. So when my key position hits its forwardmost position in the shoulder here, when I draw the rest of the arm, I'm thinking that I'm going to have a key position for the snapping of the arm two drawings later, right? So mentally I know exactly what it is that I want to do. I hope I mentally know what I'm doing, but I do. 
So I'm going to put my arms twisting. In this case here, I'm going to put my shoulders back and here and here. And then my opposing view, I'm opening it up in the opposite direction so that this arm is back here. And this one is forward here. Okay, so there's my shoulder line right there and my shoulder line right there. So I'm getting that twist taking place there. Okay. So when I go into this forwardmost position of my widest stride, I want to have my shoulders go back, but my arm is still swinging back. So this is my overlapping action. I'm going to have my hand dragging back like this. There's the wrist there. Right. So my arm is going to be in that back position. The opposing arm on the other side is going to be swinging forward. It's actually in behind the body here. So the shoulder is right there and the hands are going back in this direction. I'm drawing through right now. That would be the hand in the opposite side. So I'm just very lightly drawing it on there so that I know where it is. Okay, And this is, again, I mentioned this to you in a previous lecture, that this is called drawing through the character. You have to know where that hand is. Otherwise, if you leave it off, you're just guessing. It doesn't exist. So when you go to do your next in-between, your major breakdown, you don't know where that hand is. So where you draw the arm in the next breakdown position, you're just making it up. Okay, I, I know we're making all of this stuff up, but at least we're educating ourselves <coughs> by saying, this is the position of this arm in this one. So now I know better as to what the next position is going to be. And then when you go to drop your in-betweens in, you can appropriately draw the in-betweens in correctly. Right? So now, having said that, by drawing that hand in in this position here, I know now what this closest arm is going to be because I have to mirror it. It's going to be down here like this and dragging back this way. Because that would be the mirror of it. And this arm, I'm not going to see it. I might see, I might just show just a little sliver of the fingertip there on the front. So that if, because we're rotating the character into a three quarter view, don't forget the stomach is right here. And there's a torque taking place on it. Okay, so the hips are going away. So that's why I'm twisting this line away from us. And then the chest comes towards us here. So that later on, if I decide to draw that little belly line on there to show his, his uh, belly fur, that I can rotate that properly on the surface as well. So on this one it's coming across here and in actual fact this one here will torque the upper torso so that that line is twisting in that direction. So my center line, see how my center line now moves back and forth? It's kind of a neat little action that's going to be taking place there. So now let's go to our breakdown, number five. So we're going from drawing number one to this position here. So don't forget, I've got to step through and think to myself, okay, what are the different arm positions in this? Because now my shoulder is swinging back from this position. That's its forwardmost position. Now it's going to start to swing back, which means that I've got to have my shoulder back here. I just have to arch the back a little bit more. So where is this arm going to go? It's going to go from this position here, drawing number one, to three, then it's probably going to flip and reverse on four, five it's going to start to swing down in this direction here. So my arm will probably be <coughs> there. Like that. Okay, so it's not an accurate halfway position, but I'm thinking in terms of the overlapping action that's taking place. So then, going from this position, number one, this arm in the back is swinging back, and then it's going to reverse and come forward, so I've got to think through. One is there, two, three, snap on four, and start to come down on five. I might see just a sliver of the hand on this side back here. Then I go six, seven, eight, nine through to this position here. This one here on the swinging forward position. Now I may choose to show a little bit more arm here just as I'm stepping through it to get that action to work properly. Okay. 
So I'm going to do the same thing on the opposite side now. This is going to be our mirror image. So this shoulder now is coming into its back. It's going back and away. And the hand is coming up. So here's now where we need to kick into our perspective issue. Making sure that we're following our perspective up here so we can get the length of the arms correct. And this one hand, this hand here, I'm going to rotate it around. This one here, I'm seeing the back of the hand, and this one, I'm going to see the front of the hand. So I'm going to have that little circle pad, just to indicate that that's the palm. And on the back side, this one is going to be here. So in perspective, I'm just going to flip the hand out to about there. see just a little bit of that pad on that side there for the back of the hand. Okay. So now if I put my drawings in order, I'll just do a quick flip. You can see what kind of crude action we've got going on here for the cycle. So it's just blocked out really roughly, but we can sort of see the general idea of what's going on there. Okay. So now I can start to think about what the head is going to do. Now here's where it gets tricky. And my suggestion, my recommendation is this, that animate this part of the body first. Okay, Go through, do all your in-betweens to get all your overlapping action and everything taking place and then figure out what your head is going to do. Because actually at this point, I'm not even going to, drop, going to drop the head on because I do want it to overlap. And I want the overlap to take place on the second drawing <coughs> after, so not number one, not number two, but number three. It's going to delay by two drawings in order to get the snapping action of this forward, back and forth, so it's going to go like this. So I want to make sure that my head is doing the proper thing. And the only way I can do that is when I drop in my in-betweens. Right? So I'm not even going to try and figure out what the head is going to do right at this point. But I do want to have it do a little bit of a head rocking action back and forth. Okay. So why don't we leave it at this for this stage. Let's just combine together the two things that we know and we've already done in the double arm swing and the leg cycle. We'll put them together into the full body without the head at this point. Okay. And then we'll cover the head once we go back and we drop in our in-betweens. We'll cover the head once we come back. All right. Okay. Is everybody clear on what we're doing? Yes. All right. Go to it.